Okay, we've uh, got David Foyle here, and he's just going to make some opening remarks and then uh, take questions. And if you can just identify uh, who is asking the question and what your uh, media affiliation is when it goes, I'll <coughs> turn it over to David now. Thanks. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the uh, National Predators are obviously very pleased to acquire uh, Mike Fisher. Um, I think our, our team has played uh, very well uh, this, this year. We, like a lot of other teams, have had numerous uh, injuries. Uh, most of them have been at the forward position. Um, I think when you evaluate our team, uh, I think we always get pretty good uh, uh, marks for our goaltending and our defense and defensive play. And one of the areas that uh, we probably take a little bit of criticism or fall short on is our is our forwards and specifically our offense. We were looking for a you know a top six forward uh, last uh, summer. We we traded uh, Jason Arnott, who was our number one center, to New Jersey. Uh, we rallied and uh, signed Matthew Lombardi as a free agent. Unfortunately, Lombardi. Uh, received a concussion in his second game with the, the Predators and has not yet returned to uh, play. And we really felt we were short in that uh, that area. Uh, Mike Fisher is a player that uh, we have always liked, uh, like everything about his his uh, his game. He he plays hard. Um, he's he's he scores pretty good. Uh, he's got uh, four four last five seasons. I believe he scored 20 goals. He plays in all situations, power play, penalty killing. I notice that his ice time is over 18, I think almost 18 and a half minutes a game. That's more than any Predators forward. Uh, he's appeared in 75 playoff games. That's more than any current Predator player. Uh, uh, what I really like is that uh, this is not a rental. Uh, like a lot of deals are at the trading deadline. Uh, Mike is signed for the next uh, two years, so... Uh, this is a deal that hopefully is going to help us uh, down the stretch this year, but will hopefully help us for a lot of years to, to come. Um, you know, from giving up a, you know our first round pick, that's never comfortable for a team like ourselves. It builds primarily its, its roster through the draft, but we have drafted really well, and we have a lot of good prospects at a lot of different positions. So uh, we knew it was going to be uh, painful to do this, but. Uh, uh, that's what we did. I'm appreciative of our, our ownership. Uh, they're certainly demonstrating the willingness to do whatever it's possible to help to improve the team and to give us a chance to, to not only make the playoffs but to do well and win some rounds in the playoffs. Um, so, I, you know, I think it's a good day for the for the Predators. I mean, we all know how we can see from the standings today how close it is in the Western Conference. So, uh, uh, really looking forward to Mike Fisher coming in and helping us down the stretch and in the playoffs. So I'll stop there and uh, go allow questions. David, it's Chris Garriott from the Ottawa Sun. I'm just wondering, were you surprised that they were willing to have a discussion about this guy and that you were actually able to get him because of the type of player that he is? Well, I mean, it, it, it's obviously a very difficult uh, situation in, in Ottawa. I mean, as you know, I've known Brian Murray for a lot of years uh, uh, he and I were together in Washington. I was the general manager, and him as the coach. So we've we've talked a lot of hockey over a lot of years, and you know I feel really uh, bad for for him and the organization. They obviously had really you know good good intentions and uh, thought things were going to go a lot better this year. But they too a lot of a lot of things have happened in Ottawa, whether it be the injuries, uh, uh, tragic situations like uh, Luke Richardson's daughter. I did, you know, different things like like this that just uh, you know affect your your organization in so many so many ways, and you know there's there's no question with where they are now. And when you make a decision to trade, you know, a player like Mike Fisher, you know you're going into a different uh, different direction. And uh, you know we've certainly given him a big building block uh, today to to start that that process. You know, do you, do you think it's also a good situation for him, given you know his wife lives there and. Well, I'm sure hoping that's the case. And again, I, I think Brian uh, uh, Murray and I, I know Eugene Melnick. Uh, I think I not think I know think very highly of Mike, not only as a hockey player but as a person and what he's done for that organization. And uh, I believe he had a no-trade contract for the first couple of years of his contract. It no longer exists. I am, you know, without knowing, I'm sure there was a lot of places 
and teams that would have coveted uh, Mike. But on the surface, the, the fit for Nashville with, uh, with his wife certainly uh, we're hoping is going to be an attractive uh, situation for, for Mike and, and his wife. And again, it's not a rental situation. It's, uh, it's a situation that we hope he's going to be here for, for a lot of years to, to help us. David, David Beauclair here. <clears throat> did uh, with Marcel Gotch getting hurt last night? Did that uh, that kind of increase the the need to make a deal like this sooner rather than wait a week or two? Well, Gotch isn't hurt uh, too bad. I'm not sure what his status is for Saturday night, but once again, we've been dealing with this all year with the amount of injuries that we've had. We seem to be right on the cusp of running out of you know player you know players or quality players to to call up. And uh, again, we were right behind the eight ball after the second game of the season with Lombardi going down. And again, i got to give high marks to the forwards that we've that have played in a lot of different situations, a lot of them playing in higher roles than uh, we had anticipated when we started the year. Uh, and I think, you know, what this trade really does is it, it probably allows uh, our Coach Trotz to put everybody in their right position. And I think it's uh, it kind of completes us and, and gives us four really – really good lines, uh, which which we certainly like down the stretch in our preparation to, to make the playoffs and then to, to do some damage in the playoffs. The last time you traded for a high-end forward at this time of year, though, the, the Peter Forsberg deal, it, 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 you didn't get sort of a, the pop you wanted. The, the chemistry never seemed to fit right. You, you confident Barry maybe learned some lessons from that, that, that he can he can do a better job with, with a player like this this time? Well... Again, you uh, you were part of this. Uh, again, just for the record, uh, we gave up a lot in that transaction, but uh, I've never for a day, a second, regretted doing that. That that was fabulous to have Peter Forsberg here, uh, even at half strength or, or what have you. And he, he missed a you know, number of games, as you know, and his foot was never never right. But that had to be one of the more exciting times in our franchise. And, and again, when you do deals like this, I mean, you're hoping that Mike Fisher is, is not uh, – uh, the Messiah, uh, so to speak, but you're certainly hoping that he's going to be a good contributor and be part of the, the reason why we're going to be a, uh, a bit better and have, have more success than we ever ever had. But there's no guarantees, as we know, in this business. It's you, what you see in a player, what you, what you believe he can do, uh, and how he fits in. Hopefully they're the same thing. Maybe they're, they're different things. You don't know. But uh, all I can say is that uh, our organization, meaning the hockey ops, uh, uh, I'm very happy to have Mike Fisher here today, and we think it's going to make us better. David, uh, Josh Kribble from Tennessee. Um, you, you talked about uh, wanting to get a top six forward, and you, you did that today, obviously. Are, are you still looking at ways to improve the team as you get closer towards the deadline? And if so, where are you looking to kind of build them up? Well, one day at a time here, Josh. I think uh, you know we're still looking to get a couple of players back from uh, injuries and uh, you know, you'd like to see how Fisher, where he, where he fits in, who Barry plays him with, how our lines go, and see where we are. I mean, the good news is, is uh, we've, we've made this, this trade a couple weeks before the trading deadline, so we have time to adjust or readjust, and if there's something else that pops up, we can address that at the time. Uh, having said that, I feel pretty good about our roster right now, and all I would hope is that we have good health, and uh, I'm pretty, I would probably like to keep this pretty close to what it is right now. And uh, Fisher, obviously, a very good two-way player. Makes you stronger down the middle. Not exactly uh, the natural finisher type. Um, th does this sort of help your offense? And, and if so, and does it give you enough uh, moving forward, you think? Well, I think it's going to help us in all, all areas. I mean, uh, you know, he's not a superstar in that he's ever scored uh, 30, 40, or 50 goals, but he has scored 20 goals for the last five seasons. And... Again, if we can get that kind of production out of him with the other other things he does in the game, like kill penalties, playing against top lines, playing big minutes, playing a hard, aggressive game, I think it'll be a, a real nice upgrade for our, our team and for our offense. Ryan Forth of RLD Hockey. David, did you feel like this was a win-win a for you, provided that you didn't have to give up the prospect? Well, Again, there's lots of things talked about in the deal, and uh, you know, we, as I said earlier, we we really feel we draft well, and when we draft well, our our scouts kind of covet our prospects. So, anytime I was to mention a name, would you trade this player, that player, that that was a lot of pain. So, again, 
the first round pick gets that's very uh, that's a lot to give up in in any deal. But with what we have coming and how we've drafted, uh, we're pretty comfortable that we can we can uh, uh, it's it's a it's a fair deal. The other thing which I said earlier, which uh, which I'm probably the happiest about is that Fisher signed for, for two more years. And it's not a rental situation. So many of these deals at the uh, trading deadline are for rentals, and you pay a big price, and then you, the player goes to another team uh, the following season. So, you know, this, is a, this, is, this should be a good deal for today, and it should be a good deal for the future. Yeah, okay. Let's, yeah, uh, sorry about that. Listen, no, I just want, David, I just wanted to ask you, um, when did you have your first discussion with Ottawa, and how long did this deal take? Uh, it was about a week ago when uh, we first started uh, talking, and we've pretty well talked every day since that time. Yeah. It, w was there any discussion about players off your roster at all, or was that yes. to you? You you, you were a guy trying to add without subtracting, right? And I guess that was also an attractive part of this deal? Extensive conversations about players off our roster and players in our system or draft choices, but that's not the direction I wanted to go. You're right. Okay. All right. Sorry, that was all I wanted to ask you. Hey, hey David, it's Josh with the Tennessee and again. Um, Fisher obviously makes about four million this year, uh, four point two million cap hit. You you guys uh, have a couple defensemen you're obviously looking to sign. How does that does that change the dynamic at all, considering the fact that Fisher signed for another couple or two or three years? No, oh, this is a this is a good thing that he signed for for two more years. And his, his, his cap number is 4 to, uh, $4.2 million, but his cash is $4 million next year and $3 million the year after. And uh, lastly, what were you seeing out of the 2011 draft that, that made you okay with parting with, with that pick? Well, I think 2011 draft is fine. I didn't want to part with that pick, but just as I answered the previous question, I didn't want to trade anybody off our team. I didn't want to give up a prospect, so I'm, there was nothing, nothing left there. So, again, I... Uh, it uh, was the least painful of, of what my options were. I mean, I, if we're going to make a trade like this, as you know, I said to Brian Murray, is that i got to keep our team intact. I mean, we have injuries and what have you. We're trying to add, not just make uh, subtract. So that's, that's where we end, how we ended up where we, where we did. David, Buddy Oaks with Fred's on the Glass. Uh, a couple of questions. Uh, one thing that's always been a concern for Nashville has been revenue sharing and staying under the midpoint in order to get to the full revenue sharing. How will that affect the team this year? And secondly, is there any type of work visa or anything that needs to be done before you can come play in the States? Well, the revenue sharing uh, in the Nashville is, a, is somewhat of a complicated uh, situation in which you're referring to. There's different tranches of, of things that you qualify for and uh, or don't qualify for, but the major thing for revenue sharing uh, for the Nashville Predators is our is our attendance. And as you know, our attendance, uh, and I knock on wood, has been very good this year, and it's uh, trending uh, uh, very well. So I, for for almost all the components of revenue sharing, we will we will uh, we will hit this year. So that's uh, that's a good thing for for us. Um, on the other. Uh, on the other question that you asked, uh, Mike Fisher is a Canadian citizen, so he needs to get a, a work visa, which we're working on. Uh, should be done hopefully by tomorrow, so we expect him to be here tomorrow night and in the lineup for us on Saturday. You know, I think I should uh, say here, going back to some of the other questions too, is that, uh, you know, this is a hard deal for us to make give our first choice, but I think uh, Brian Murray did a a great, great job here in, in, in getting what he did for, for Fisher, too. I mean, these deals are hard uh, nowadays with players make uh, so much money, and there probably wasn't a lot of clubs that could afford to take, you know, this type of salary on. And uh, uh, like last year, he made a deal at the, at the draft where he traded his first pick for David Runblatt. And David Runblatt, I'm sure, is going to play for the Senators next year. So um, it's, a, it's a big rebuilding block that he got here for, for Fisher. Anything else? David, uh, Nick Kapanika from Yahoo Sports. Could you just expound on, you, you talked about ownership being supportive. Barry Trotz yesterday was saying that in Nashville it's no longer about surviving, it's about winning the Stanley Cup. What does this deal mean in the big picture for the franchise and, and what your aspirations are? Well, you know, you, 
you know, we're happy with our, our club. I mean, our, we've, uh, we seem like we're really got a good blue-collar work ethic all the time. Our goaltending has been terrific. Our defensive play led by Shea Weber or Ryan Suter are one of the best tandems in, in the league. And, you know, when we fall short, it's not like we get outworked. It's just like we get outscored. I mean, if uh, there was a stat the other day, if we can get three goals, I mean, we virtually won every game that we play that we score three goals. The problem is, is we're having trouble getting to three goals on too many occasions. If we can get one more forward, like a Mike Fisher in there, and if he can score approximately 20 goals like he has uh, before, that might be 15 goals more than our, our fourth center, for example. So it's that type of, it might be a small upgrade in that area. He, he might also be able to play against a higher line in a, in a checking situation to prevent the uh, opposition from scoring a goal. So it's a fine line here in the NHL, and we're obviously banking that Mike Fisher's, along with what the, the parts that we already have, will just kind of complete our forward lines and just make us a little bit better. David, this is Dirk Hogue from OnThePoreCheck.com. With uh, now three veteran centers under contract for the next couple of years, how do you see that impacting some of the other uh, young centers in the organization, like Nick Spalling, Cal O'Reilly, uh, and Colin Wilson? I assume he's probably then going to stay on the wing in the short term. Well, I mean, that's the, <clears throat> that's the good news, is that I think uh, with, uh, with, with centers, almost all centers can play the wing. We found that we drafted Colin Wilson as a center, and he's playing wing. It's Nick Spalling as a center, and he's going uh, he's gonna to play the wing under this format. Jared Smithson is, can play the wing or play, uh, play center. Matthew Lombardi, when he comes back, may end up playing the wing, which might be more beneficial to him now that we got uh, Fisher. I've seen Fisher play in World Championships where he's played the wing. So I think we're talking about good hockey players that have the ability, the flexibility, if you will, to play multiple positions. And I just look at that as a plus, not as a negative. Anything else for David? Uh, David, this is Jeremy Gilbert from Section303.com. Uh, you, you may have addressed this, and I apologize, but uh, the this, this obviously you're talking like Lombardi uh, readdition, you know, readding him to the roster with Fisher. So, uh, are you talking about that in the terms of this season, and then how that's still a possibility? Well, in my my wishes, I I do. I mean, Matthew's getting a bit uh, a bit better. He's been riding the elliptical. <clears throat> for the last week, uh, we're certainly seeing signs of improvement. Um, I, I think it would be uh, incorrect for me to, to say that he's going to play anytime soon. Um, I, I think the best thing I can say is that I know he's getting better. I know I, he's signed for two more years. I know he's going to play for us next year. I'm hoping that he can get better and maybe play at the end of the season in the playoffs for us. But uh, Again, we didn't make this trade for Fisher because uh, we're not going to have Lombardi for the next uh, two years. We made it because we do have Lombardi, and this just gives us, uh, you know, one better forward to add on to a, a nucleus that's getting better and better.